If Reality Check Radio enriches your day and life, support us to keep bringing you the content, voices, perspectives, and dose of reality you won't get anywhere else. Visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate. Rachel Stewart is back on the show. This is going to be a frank discussion about the trans debate, cancel culture, standing up for women and women's rights. Now, Rachel is as subtle as a brick in the face, so this is going to be fun. She joins me now. Welcome back to The Crunch, Rachel. It's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you, Cam. Nice to be here. Uh, Things have got a bit heated, haven't they, in this space that we're talking about especially around transgender issues and things like that. We've got, you know, the CAS report, the WPATH information that's been revealed by Michael Schellenberg. Then we've got Winston Peters uh, and his bathrooms bill. And, of course, we had Damien Grant come out after the CAS report was revealed saying perhaps people should be braver and actually challenge uh, a few of the things that are being said out there. Yeah, um, all of those things are are very uh, helpful. it's it's interesting if Damien's the last thing you mentioned, but uh, I, I, Damien and I have had some terribly heated arguments over this issue for ye- for a few years, and I'm always ha- I was always having a dig at him, and and he, but you know one thing about Damien is he sticks with you. He doesn't he doesn't just go all oh, that's into you and blocks you, and that's it. He's he's no Sean Plunkett. So you know um, he stuck with it, and then one day he he got it. And and I said to him, finally, where have you been? And I was pretty mean, but you know, it was just like so many people, um, particularly men, stand off to the side, thinking it's not affecting them. And of course, in many ways, it does not. But in many ways, it does. And 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 finally, I think when you realise what was happening to children, which we've been banging on about for years, us you know, turfs, um, he finally got it. And I was very impressed um, that he did. And I'm pleased he did. But you know, the other thing that sort of disappoints me slightly is that. And it doesn't matter because we're going to get there and men are going to be the key to this. And I've always thought they probably would be. But it's a bit disappointing when you see, you know, Graham Linehan, who's great. He's done fantastic work, but he flies into New Zealand, the Free Speech Union, hook into him straight away. And suddenly they start to get a few things that they weren't getting before. So men listen to men. And it, and I, I guess we all know that. Women all know that. They don't listen to us as much. But this is the, the thing that baffles me as a bloke is um, how on earth are we tolerating men telling women where they can go, what they can use, what you know, that, what they're going to be part of, all of that sort of thing? Because that, that's basically what it is. The, the trans agenda is a men's agenda to take over women's spaces, whether they're virtual or in reality. And I see it as a, as a proper bloke to say, no, <laughs> you know, We've had a we've had a, a women's liberation movement for decades that has been successful, has been brilliant, and now it's being taken away because some weak men want to be women. Yeah, and a, and a whole bunch of weak men sit back and say nothing. Sit back and say nothing. So, but you know, I think I think a lot of it is that the feminist movement has got a bad rap in the in the in the twenty twenty in twenty twenty four and and earlier. Um, a lot of people think that the feminist movement was evil and we caused our own demise. And you know, you could you could get into a huge uh, discussion about that. And I think there are some aspects of that that are possibly true. You could argue that about the pill. You know, you, there's many things mm. you could argue about. But in the end, I think feminism's been very successful, and but a lot of men have a very uh, bristly reaction to that. Uh, their hackles go up, and every time that woman was, they thought, I think, and Damien's admitted, you know, mm. um, that a lot of men just thought we were overcooking this and that it was not a big deal, really, and we were just being shrill, hysterical women. I don't really tend to the hysterical, and and I've, I've stuck with that, um, but I know right from wrong, and I and I could see where it was going. And so it's really good to finally get Damien on board and a few others, and and it will change the dynamics as, as along with this inflection point that we've got on Saturday. What astonishes me is not the the trans folk that are trying to be women. I mean that's bad enough, mm. but it's the trans allies that are women that enable this. 
and excuse it of especially in in regards to sport uh with women uh, men competing in women's sport and taking gold medals that they don't deserve yeah well i think that's where we get back to the feminism 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 was a good thing up until the maybe the 90s and that's what i should have said uh and then it got very skewy and went awry and became all about women could act like men and they can have one night stands and we can just do anything. And, and, you know, I mean, when I was driving, when I was the first woman train driver, there were these bumper stickers saying women can, women can do anything on cars. Right. Yeah. In the eighties. And I remember just thinking, that's yeah, just I remember bloody, those. they're just bloody ridiculous. I remember just thinking that's ridiculous. Well, that goes without saying I thought, but mm. what I think's happened since then is that we've got a generation of women now mainly in their 40s, early 40s, mid 40s, uh, and late 30s, who believe that mantra, who think women can do anything, which means that we're probably physically actually as strong as they are. Some women actually think that. Um, and this is now, become, feminism now has become absolutely bastardised. So, so what I'm saying, I guess, is that they just believe that trans women can take estrogen and somehow lower their testosterone levels and compete against women fairly. I mean, you'd have to be nuts to think that. Uh, well, well, that's it. You do have to be nuts. I mean, you know, I look at Riley Gaines and I think, wow, that's one strong woman. The 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 cost to her has been enormous, but the cost to you and and you know Annie O'Brien and and other people in New Zealand that have stood up against this nonsense has been enormous. Hmm. It has, but, you know, I wouldn't change anything. I couldn't change anything, Cam, because like you, I have a certain amount of integrity and, and I believe in what I believe and I don't care. They can, they can they could take me down and cost me my livelihood and cost me my guns, but, although we could come back, but, um, mm. but, you st but I'm still there on Saturday talking and I'm never going to give up. And the picketers or the Antifa who, who, or whoever who are already threatening now to turn up, uh -huh. um, they don't scare me. I'm not worried. Uh, maybe I should be, but, you know, we'll just keep going. We'll never give up. Well, they tried to shut down Avi Yemeni coming uh, to mm -hmm. Wellington, and it really was, in actual fact, a couple of sad old men driving around in a jalopy, um, posting up some notices on the notice board. And when uh, they were confronted with some blokes from the Man Up crew uh, of Brian Tamaki, they disappeared. So they're not that tough. They're not that yeah, they're tough, like, but they're actually blokes that like beating up on women. Oh yeah, well we saw that with Posey Parker, didn't we? And um, yeah, yeah, anti far in Wellington. Well, they just they just little creeps, really, to me. I mean, maybe I'm mis maybe I'm underestimating them. Maybe they'll that'll be the end of us on sad day, but I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. You know, if you look at the people that are involved in Inflection Point, um, you know, there's some there's some some decent people that are uh, wrapped around that. Uh, that will provide support, especially now that Antifa or whatever they call themselves, you know, a bunch of weirdos wearing masks, still mm. talking about a pandemic that never happened. It's funny because they do like wearing masks. Maybe that's a hangover from the from the pandemic. But, um, yeah, yeah, I don't understand why if there's social or their position around the trans issue, and this goes for TRAs as well, why they're always masked up. just fascinates me. Well, I think they just um, want to get involved in the bash and don't want to get identified. That's what yes. it really is. They know there's going to be trouble, and so that they do that uh, just to to hide their faces because they're gutless cowards, really, at the end yeah, of the day. They are. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really looking forward to this, and I think, you know, the difference between this event and other events is this is male-organised, male-led, and that gives me a sense of, security that I think is is different from, you know, the Posey Parker event. Um, and men are stepping up, and I, I think it'll be a really good day, and, and I really hope New Zealanders start not being scared because you can't shut down everybody. You can't cancel everybody. It's impossible. Well, you know, I've got a good friend, and she says to me that um, I just refuse to entertain their delusions. They cannot make me entertain their delusion that they're a woman. Yeah, no. It's not possible, and I don't know how anyone can. You know, I was I was watching Brett Weinstein and Heather Haying, his wife, uh, on uh, the Dad podcast. I uh, can't think of the guy's name, and it's about it was uh, on YouTube, and it was about the gender wars, and they were saying that the scary thing of and they're evolutionary biologists. I'm sure you've heard of them. 
Um, yep. And they were, and if not, you must look into them and everyone, they're just the best. And they come at the world from that lens, which is evolutionary biology. So they were sitting there and they were just saying, look, two plus two equals four. There are two sexes, male and female. And they're talking to this guy and he's, and I, and I, and, and she said, what's really scary is that everybody's just pushed that aside to be inclusive and lovely and nice. And we just, and this is the end of the world as we know it. If you, if you don't have sex, if you don't have the sex of the male and the female and you think everything is fluid, then we are in big trouble. <laughs> well, it, it's a very small uh, minority uh, with a very tiny mindset, uh, but for some reason they mm -hmm. have a very vocal and active uh, voice out there that's amplified by a whole bunch of woke media. Yeah, and then you've got to ask yourself, well, what's behind it? And I guess then you get into the globalist thing and you've got to think to yourself, well, why is National not, you know, I have information that National, and I know that National will not come to this. They don't want a bar of it. I hope I'm proven wrong. I think there's pressure on them. But the, their MPs have been told to keep quiet. That's absolutely for sure. So why? And then you have to think, well, it's got to be about the global agenda and money and, and pharma, big pharma. You've got to always follow the money, which is what my column was about in 2018, and here we are, you know, uh, six years later, and it's so evident that this is a, a uh, this is being run by WHO, WEF. I hate to go back to these these what people call conspiracy theories, but that's it's exactly where it leads. Well, they're conspiracy facts now, aren't they? Because they are. we, we've seen the CAS report come out, and then Michael Schellenberg is sterling work on. W path in the United States. This is really is, uh, you know, to steal the title of of the weekend's event, the inflection point, because the facts are coming out on the side of people like yourself and Annie O'Brien who've been saying, "Hang on a minute, uh, you know, th there's something weird about this. There's something strange about that." And it does, in fact, look like a concerted, organised agenda for whatever reason. Yeah, money. It's always money. It's got to be money. Or, well, yeah, that, and somehow they somehow there's something in in people being completely, well, transhumanism's next. I mean, this has to be the the natural go to after this, doesn't it? If you can, if people can accept that humans can change sex, and I never will, and you never will, um, then they'll accept anything. And I and I think that's the next uh, step. So. It's a it's a hell of a pushback going on, and with the likes of J.K. Rowling and people with power like that, uh, really stepping up um, and just oh, she's amazing. Um, well, you know, she, she's in the news again, isn't she? Because there's been a, a bloke that's uh, been appointed a manager of a football club who claims that he's a woman now and um, is a, a referee as well, a rather burly looking. A woman, if he is indeed a woman, but J.K. Rowling mocked the Daily Mail because the Daily Mail said, um, uh, you know, she said that he he looks like a man. She said, no, I didn't say he looks like one. I said he is one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. She might write fantasy, but she lives in reality. You know, um, actually, I saw a picture of him this morning as a man, as a referee. He's quite attractive, actually. I thought he was quite a good looking man. I, I thought he was the sort of guy you'd like to go and have a beer with in the pub and look cheeky and lovely and look normal. And then suddenly, what the hell? So we yeah. have to conclude that porn got to him because this is a, lo a lot of what drives it is porn. So Okay. I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah, have a think about that because there's been a lot of studies done. There's a bit of research to back that up that the more pornified uh, males become watching certain porn videos, the more they want, they imagine themselves as women and what it's like to be a woman in that porn scene and the next thing you know. And they talk about it. There's been interviews done with, with a number of uh, trans women and they talk about porn being the the key that, that did it to them. So that's, it's a lot of it is a kink. I mean, why else do they do drag queen story time? Why else are they in our toilets? Well, why do they want to be there, you know? Well, that's the thing. I, I can never understand, and I still don't, who came up with the idea of drag queen story time and why? Yeah. What's well, the point of it? The genesis goes back to the, oh, there's a really great article, very long article, which I must send you, and it's um, it's about the origins of it. 
and it goes back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, was huge in, in San Francisco, and how drag queen story time's always been linked to pedophilia. Right. And there's a whole lot of data in there, and it's, it's I think it's in, um, just trying to think what it's in, Listen, some listeners will have, would have read it, but I will send you that link, Cam, it is such a good read, and it's so well done, and and won accolades actually about the truth of the drag queen movement. It is very much pedophilia based. Well, we're looking at uh, the news at the moment of a, a pedophile, a bloke who's decided that he's now a she um, in prison and, mm. uh, and is uh, trying to sue the government because he reckons that he's been hard, hard done by, by, by the correction system uh, and everything else, but the, the courts aren't having a bar of it. They're telling him, you know, you got your balls in a twist here, mate. But it's just a delusion, and this guy's just just playing along with it, and the media play along with it too. And the Herald just keeps calling him a she, even though he talk, you know, it talks extensively about his sex crimes against, yeah. you know, um, and they call him a she. What sort of, you know, it's like rape uh, rapists. They get they go to they go to court in New Zealand, and the judge calls them she, and they've raped some woman. Imagine. The, the victim standing there listening to this judge say, you must show, show respect and call him she after she's been raped by him. I mean, I find that absolutely appalling. No. And I really thought by now, and I'm getting pretty annoyed with National Have to, I'm getting very anti-CAM, um, that they have this opportunity to, um, you've been ahead of this one, but they have <laughs> this opportunity to step up here and they are not doing it. In fact, they're actively ignoring this and trying, hoping it will go away. Will it? Christopher Luxon, if you're listening, I'm sure you're not, but if you were to, we're never going away, mate. Oh, they listen to me. Trust me, they listen. Okay. <laughs> you know, they, they they read and they listen. And but the, you know, I'm actually happy though. Well, well, not necessarily happy. I'm I'm ambivalent to national taking a a, a quiet approach to this or a silent approach because it just hands a, a New Zealand first. And Winston Peters and Shane Jones, a mm. massive cudgel that they can use to drive a wedge to peel off a few more votes for them, uh, for yep. people who believe in politicians should stand for something. And yeah, that you know, true. that's the thing. Christopher Luxon actually doesn't stand for anything. He's wetter than an otter's pocket. And he you only have to look at the polls to see that national isn't going up. They aren't going down either, but they're stagnating. Uh, they should be going up, but it's, it's the minor parties that are going up uh, as a result of standing up for things that are sensible. And Winston Peters' bill that he uh, introduced to Parliament last week um, is exactly that. And, of course, the little whoopsie from um, Northcote who didn't get elected uh, but is now in on the list, Shannon Halbert, uh, mm. he's come out with his little whinging mealy mouthed excuses standing up for what he calls trans rights. And I and yep. I just and I just think if the Labour Party wants to die in a ditch over letting men use women's uh bathrooms, then let them. Then let them and see where that ends up. Yeah, I watched and I thought the gall of you, mate, the gall of you, a homosexual male who thinks it's okay to tell women who they should allow into their spaces, the gall of that guy. Um, and he doesn't see it. He doesn't see the misogyny just oozing out of every pore in himself. He just doesn't get it. And oh. unfortunately, some gay men are, are very misogynist, We've, we, and it, some aren't, but many are, and it's a real concern to hear that. Yeah, Yeah, but as I said, let them do it, because there's 50% of the population who actually are women, and yes. like the good old-fashioned types, you know, like mm. proper women, and yeah. and and they vote, and then they're going to look at the Labour Party and go, you know, we don't want blokes in our bathrooms. We yeah, don't but want. Like you, yeah, we but don't like want, you say, there's a lot of those women that are now, you know, on the side of the trannies. So, you know, it worries me that we've got this generation of women in their forties, roughly white women, particularly, uh, who who just accept this stuff. So I worry about that, but I hope it turns before the next election, anyway. Yeah, you know, there was a time in the in the dim dark past, but it's not that far away that we can't remember it. If you were a bloke and you tipped up into the into the women's uh, changing rooms, that you probably got a hiding uh, mm. for, for it, and then the police called. And and mm. now 
the police are called and they'd be separating men and then trying to lecture the women how they need to be more inclusive. Yes. I have a fear about this. I have a fear that I'm going to run into Bomber Bradbury um, in the toilets one day. Well, he said, he, he's going to, he said he's going to yeah. do that. Yeah, good. I hope it's just, me in that toilet. Just shows, him what, shows us what a creep he is. He's a creep. And um, I think a lot of people have known that for a while, but, you know, there it is. And I'm afraid, being the personality that I am, uh, that I would any man in a toilet and me, it would be it wouldn't be good. And I would do everything to get that man out of there. And you know what would happen to me though, Cam? I'd be yeah, you'd, get pro- and, you'd be prosecuted. You'd have yeah, your guns taken. You you're not a fit and yeah. proper person because yeah. because you're mean and you're not inclusive. That's it. So I tend not to go to public toilets now because I don't ever want to be put in that position. But I certainly talk to women that do go to public toilets and, and are put in that position and it's getting trickier and trickier. Well you could That's take your sure. you could go take your hawk and they're used to hunting small um targets, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I guess, but yeah, nah. It's, it's a difficult <laughs> it's a very it's a very difficult one. I but I just struggle to see why people can't see what we're seeing, which is this is just blatantly wrong. But I think you're right though. You know, back at the start of of this interview, you said it, it, it's going to require men to stand up it is. And, and men to say, no, enough, stop, you're being stupid. I mean, yeah. I mean, put it in, into context. Right? If you had a nine-year-old kid who came up to you and said, look, Dad, uh, I really want to get hammered tonight. You've got some good scotch there. Let's crack the cap off that and uh, get hammered. You'd give them a clip around the ear and send them to their room, wouldn't you? Well, you'd it, like to think so. Yeah. If a nine-year-old came up to you and said, look, Dad, it's time I lost my virginity. Can you take me to a whorehouse? You'd give them a clip and send them to their room. But you get a nine-year-old who says, oh, Dad, I want to be a girl. And they go, oh, okay, darling. Well, we'll here, take these drugs. See, yeah. see how nuts it is? Yeah, it's nuts. And it's you know? child abuse. It's child abuse. Yeah, why would you, know, you do got, that to your child? Just- yeah, well, Transhausen's by proxy, they call it now, instead of Munchausen's by proxy. Oh, Transhausen's by proxy. Oh, that's so the really good. There, that's yeah, really the mothers, good. Yeah, the mothers sit there and they, in the interviews, and they go, oh, my boy's known my my boy as a as a girl, and yes, and, you know, and then they get all the bloody attention, and it just makes you want to vomit. It really does. And I think it's a real thing, and I think mothers are really basking in that. And I don't have any sympathy for any woman who comes out and says, my child's trans and writes big stories about it and this and stuff or wherever. It just makes me want to throw up. You're a terrible well, mother. Well, that's the thing is we see the media uh, ingratiating themselves, not just on this issue. You, you take, uh, you know, there was an article in Stuff the other day that apparently uh, Maori women giving birth uh, uh, four times more likely to have all sorts of other problems and therefore, as a result of colonialism, it's the white person's fault and we need to fix it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, normal. This is uh, normal now. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then you get the stories about, oh, look, I've, I've tattooed my chin and now I feel like a proper Maori. It's just bollocks that's being shoved down everybody's throat uh, that is, this is normal. That this is and it's crazy stuff, and you sit there and think, well, really, have you got any proof of that? What's your empirical evidence to support that? Yeah, you, know, mm. uh, you know, you could get a kid come up and say, I want to be a Sith Lord. You're going to say, oh, that's a nice story, dear. Run along, read your Star Wars books. But, but, you know, and that's how you should treat it. a kid coming up and say, oh, Dad, I want to be a girl. No, you don't. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But, so, but oh no, we've got to entertain the delusion from a nine-year-old. Yeah, well, why are we entertaining it and why are parents entertaining it? And I really hope that a lot of parents are sitting around thinking, and, and a lot of people have the luxury of it not happening to them. Their kids aren't showing signs of being trans, and so they carry on about inclusivity and diversity. And But, you know, they want to be liked. It's a big virtue, sign- virtue signaling Olympics, and it's just, it, to me, I don't care if you like me or you don't. I'm just going to keep saying what, what is wrong here. It's It's just basic biology, it is basic humanity, it is basic decency not to drug your kids, cut bits off, castrate them. And I don't and, and people don't want to look into it too much too too deep because they don't want to know. They just want to be kind. And I find that it's a it's a it's a mind virus. It really is. Well it has infected um the media because I know of one journalist, particularly nasty journalist, I must say, 
Uh, I have a personal beef with him. But um, well, this this eliminates about nobody. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm the same. Yeah, but 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 his child's transitioning, and there's oh. another journalist at Newsroom, and his child's transitioning, and so that's when you actually see that see articles in the Herald and Newsroom and things about this agenda. You think, well, hang on a second, you're all part of this. You're you're yeah. validating your decisions as a parent by normalizing this it with mm. with stories yeah actually interesting helen joyce who wrote trans the book which is such a great read it's probably the the best read about the whole movement that came out about three or four years ago she was in an interview a few months ago saying um the problem with turning this whole movement over is going to be those parents that thought that believed that they did the right thing are never going to admit they did the wrong thing because who wants to admit that they they stuffed up their own children and they will hang into the death and they will never accept that they've they've made a mistake and they're going to be the, the last thing to topple because you never want to think that you did something to your children that was absolutely wrong. And I think she's got an abs- a very good point. Yeah, you know, I, good I think yeah. she has. I mean, if you look at the unwillingness of people to look at the evidence that's now before us about the, the COVID vaccines, that's that's coming out on a daily basis where people like like ourselves here at RCR, like yourself, who said, uh, you know, that this is wrong. There's something wrong with this. We shouldn't be doing this. We're all called nutters. Uh, we're all called fruitcakes, uh, conspiracy theorists. Well, we actually were right, but but everyone was so invested in pushing that for whatever reason that for them to actually admit that they got it wrong. Uh, is is going to be a huge thing, and we haven't yet. I think we just saw the start of it uh, this week with uh, uh, was it Chris Cuomo uh, coming out and you know, CNN spokesman saying, "Well, I'm vaccine injured," and it's going to take people you know like that to come out and say that sort of thing, and we need to do that on the trans uh, argument as well. But mm-hmm. it's going to rec- like, and then the way people. Someone said to me the other day on the weekend, "Well, what's it going to take for people to realise that the, these vaccines were bad?" And I said, "It's going to take an All Black to drop dead on the field." Yeah, something like that. Something like that, or or an All Black to come out and say, "This is the worst thing I ever did. It, it curtailed my career. I wish I'd never done it." Yeah, and, and then be- people, yeah, and there must be consequences. But until that time, uh. We're going to see the same the same thing. Just you know, we're going to have media that keep on pushing that that you know, people go down the rabbit holes. Um, we're going to have the media pushing things that if you are against trans people, that you're uh, a nasty person, you're not inclusive. Uh, all of these things. It's a it's a narrative that will only crack once the people who have got the power to voice those things crack themselves. Yes. And I, and I think the beginnings are happening with the trans movement. I do. Um, oh, I, I do too. I mean, the Cass yeah. report is was, is huge. It's w huge. the W Path revelations is huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got J.K. Rowling, who's got more money than a bull can shit, uh, who doesn't care uh, if they try and boycott or do anything to to hurt. They can't hurt her because she's no. got so much money they can't hurt her. So she just keeps on doing it, and she and she's staring down. The government and their edicts and their hate speech yes. laws as well. Yes, yes, because on, yeah. because yeah. she she's she's too big to fail, and she's that's, that's fail. it's like Elon Musk as well. He's too big to fail, and yeah. so he can he can go to war with the Australian government and beat them over free speech because he can, mm. and he does. And mm. you have to admire people who have principles. Yeah, you do. Because it can cost you, you know. Principles are very expensive. I remember Stephen Frank saying that to me when I first contacted him after my guns went. You know, he said, well, having principles is very expensive, isn't it, Rach? I said, yeah. And, you know, it's true. And, and I, again, wouldn't change anything. But the vindication that I think will come one day will be very nice. I'm starting to smile a bit more about this. We're starting to be, you know, we're starting to be vindicated, which is which is a nice feeling. Yeah, it, it is. it is a nice feeling. But we don't need to do the I told you so's because no. their shame is bad enough for them as it is. Well, I hope so. I noticed that there's a few journalists that uh, out there that usually hammer on, you know, about the trans thing constantly and 
you know, run me down and all the rest still go on, even after all these years. Um, yeah, you, that's you that's- should you should invite them all down for a for a hawking weekend and see. Yeah, you know, that'll separate the men from the boys, so they to speak. They wouldn't come, mate. They wouldn't come. I would. Oh, they are good on you, but they're too scared of me. But, you know, there's a number of them that just uh, starting to pull their horns in and go pretty quiet lately. Because I think the cash report, if you read it from top to toe, which is what Damien did, and I've done bits of it, um, but not all of it because, you know, it's the same old stuff, which we kind of knew, but it's very interesting report. Once you read that thing from top to toe, you cannot – you just and they what they do is they just don't read it. They just turn their cheeks and look and look the other way. Again, it's a, there's some anal- you know um, similarities between the vaccine issue. The information that's coming out is so big that it's easier to stick your head in the sand or your fingers in your ears and scream la 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 la. But that eventually ends. You become hoarse or you get tired from holding your fingers in your ears, and eventually you will have to listen and you will have to speak out. Yeah. The tide will turn on this. The tsunami wave's coming in and it's going to happen, and I'm just so here for it. I can't believe it. Now, you're uh, you're busy this weekend, aren't you, with this? Uh, yes. Uh, what's it called? Inflection point. Yeah. Just one of the speakers. Um, there's a whole bunch. Uh, you know, Bob McCroskey and uh, there's uh, Simon Brian O'Connor. Tamaki. Simon O'Connor, I'm very pleased to see Simon there. Yeah. Um, uh, the Landy sisters, me, uh, Jennifer Bielik, who I based a lot of my column on in 2018 and still got told by the media council I was wrong, but she was always right and I was right too uh, in terms of the beauty blockers and, and those those things. Then the uh, then there's a detransition of flying in from Australia. Can't think of a name. Of, uh, Mia Jeffries, maybe. It's her yeah. name. She's been through the absolute mill. So she's going to be interviewed by Annie O'Brien, which is great. Um, so we'll all be we'll all be there. I've missed people out. I'm sorry, but um, we'll all be there. Um, and I'm really pleased to be there with the Christians. The gays and the Christians unite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So whereabouts is this inflection point? Uh, it's Kina Centre in Cable Street in Wellington. It's Kina Conference Centre, I think. Twenty dollars a ticket. They they're going pretty fast now. Uh, there's six hundred seats. So let's see we can fill them up. There may be a live stream, um, which you may pay something for. Uh, the tickets are only 20 bucks, but the live stream may be, I don't know, less than that. I just say to everybody who can't come, and a lot of people aren't based in Wellington and want to hear what we've got to say. Uh, unsilenced we are, so um, tune on in. But I think it'll be – it's the first time this kind of event has happened, although already the Takina Centre is getting very nervous and doing silly things, but they can't actually – stop this and um there will be politicians there i believe so i'd I'd be very careful if i were them well there's going to be a few rowdies the poniki anti-fascists who seem rather fascist to me they always seem to wear black and like waving red flags around yeah yes (laughs) yes i can't wait to meet them yeah I, i think you'd probably scare them i don't know but i i i won't be i won't be trying to bait them but i certainly can't wait to see them in the flesh because, yeah, I just can't believe these people exist, really, these little wowsers. <laughs> yeah. they're out there. They're out yep. there, all right. Now, all they do is exist to uh, silence other people because they don't want the truth coming out. Yeah, and this no debate business, no debate, no debate. Well, guess what? We're bloody having one, guys. Yeah, we're having one whether you like it or not. That's right. Yeah. I noticed they call it a hateful event. Yes, I saw that. Mm. So hateful. I'm so we're all so hateful. Yeah, I mean, they just it's, it, there's so much of this movement is incredibly linguistic, in that they turn words against you. The woke movement, I should say, but the trans movement too. They use your words. They twist them and use the very thing that they are. They use against the people that are trying to do some good in the world. Um, I consider the hateful people to be the ones outside um, chanting and carrying on and trying to stop us from speaking. That to me is hateful. Well, it's, and the it's, Wellington City Council is complicit in this, and I'm pretty sure that they're going to be up to something too. They better be bloody careful what they do because it's it's um, like the people pushing for hate speech, hate speech legislation, particularly Muslims, right? They 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 hate the Western ideals, mm. they hate liberalism, they hate your religion, they hate Jews, they hate Christians. They hate and homosexuals. They, they especially hate Israel and anything to do with it. Hate homosexuals, hmm. so they've they've their entire 
ideology is filled with hate. Yes. And yet they lobby for hate speech laws because people are saying mean things about, mean but true things about Islam. Yeah. And, and Muslims. Enough. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I've had people say, oh, we need to oppose hate speech legislation. I said, no, we don't. We need to let it happen. And then we can turn it on them. Yeah, you might be, but you know, it doesn't look like it's going to happen here now, which is a, which is a which win. is good, yeah, which is it's, good. But yeah, you know, they don't even know what they don't know because boy, changes a government can change things. That's for sure. The what the torment I got, through, and that's really what I'm talking about is uh, on Saturday is the torment that I went through at the hands of the state. Actually, mm. uh, I want people to know that the state, and in this my case, the police that was, uh, and that was pushed through by certain Labour people too, um, government people, the state can torment you enormously and we need I, to know the consequences of that. I know it all too well, Rachel. That I, I know you do. do. <laughs> but, yeah, the but, state is, yeah. The, what I've found is the best defence against the state doing that is to have a louder voice. Yeah. Because if you're quiet, then they win. And you, if you have a loud voice and you make it, painful for them to do what they're doing, mm. then they won't do it. No, you're right. And and in the case, my case, it costs money and time and effort and yours too. Mm. But we were vindicated and it was worth it. Um, and you just have to keep going. You can't sit back and let the state just kick your door in and do what they want to do just because someone told them in government that they wanted to make an example of you. You know. Yeah, I mean, Ronald Reagan, I mean, I, I harp on about this almost every show. Ronald Reagan said the nine most um, the nine words that people fear the most in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, the, when you've been the police come calling, they're not your friends. No, no, I've learned that. And I, uh, I, my opinion of the New Zealand police is, uh, is very different from, from how it used to be. Um, I, you know, I'd been struggling for a while with some of the things that were going on, but when they come to my door, and did what they did. And then a week later came with a taser and looked like they were going to taser me because someone said that I was about to kill myself. And I asked him, oh, who's that? And he said, oh, we can't reveal our sources. Fortunately, I had people here uh, having dinner, but there was one in the camellia bush with her hand on a taser. I think that if no one had been here, they would have tasered me and well, said that I'd resisted. I had exactly the same issue. I had two police turn up to my house. Yeah. And they said, uh, you know, knocked on the door and they said, oh, we're here to inspect your, your gun safe. And I said, well, you've already done that. And um, he said, oh, no, we, we need to inspect your gun safe. I said, oh, okay. Have you made an appointment? Well, no. I said, well, you're the police. You should know the law. You haven't made an appointment. Oh, come on, we're here now. I said, I'm busy. Of course, that's and changed the, now, though. Yeah, that well, it does, especially if you're a collector as well, like me. They can they can come in, but they have Anytime. to still be yeah. they still have to be reasonable. Right? They can't come at yeah. four in the morning. Okay, no. But but at that time, uh, you know, I said I'm busy, and then the cop said to me, "Well, well what are you busy doing?" I said, "I'm talking to two idiots about the law." <laughs> now, yeah. now get now get in your car and go away. Now, most people in my position. Uh, with a firearms license would comply with the police because they don't want to have their firearms license taken away because the police decided to, you know, get a bit upset with you. But the law's the law. And I insisted they follow the law and they didn't like it. Yeah. Um, but but that set a, a benchmark. So any interactions I have with the police since then, they already know that that's in the in there because before they come to see you, they go and look up everything in there and they see that, oh, okay, this guy insists on following the law. Mm. So my interactions are, are much more pleasant now. I have because, a feeling that that law's changed, though, Cam, with this new firearms thing. They can now come any time and ask to see your guns. Uh, yeah, but it has to be a reasonable time. Right? They, yeah, they what time of the day was it for you? Well, that was 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, mine was too, roughly, yeah. Yeah. They like to do that, you know, when you're in your nighty or in your pajamas or something like that. Yeah. I was not my nighty, but pajamas, and I was <laughs> fast asleep. Actually, it was a frosty morning, <laughs> and I was so cold. And these guys are in my house. The heat is not going. I'm absolutely freezing, and I was shaking. I was shaking with cold, but I was also shaking with absolute shock, mm. I think, and rage that they'd done that six weeks after a tweet. You know. Well, it was subsequently and, I found out that that visit was uh, as a result of a false 
uh, warning to the police that I was going to try and kill myself. That, ah, same from the second one was me too. Someone did it to me too. Yeah, they they yeah. do that so that you'll react badly and then they can tase you or shoot you. And that's that, exactly what it felt like. That that's yeah. that's the tactic out of the United States. Um, uh, they call it swatting. Yeah, where they yeah. they call in and and the police act to protect themselves because if if they if they believe that there's a mental health issue. This person yeah. could be in a position where they can shoot me, so they shoot you first That's and then it. deal with it afterwards. And that is a tactic that has been used against me, and you've now confirmed it's been used against you. It has, and she had her hand on her taser, and I'm looking at them. Fortunately, at the same time, it's like 7 o'clock at night, at the same time, a, a friend of mine's walking up the drive, and he's coming for dinner. Yeah. And he sees all of this, and he walks up and stand, just stands there and looks at them while they're doing it. And I said... So someone told you I'm self-harming, and they said, yes. Can you tell me who? And he said, we don't reveal our sources. I thought the word source was a very good word. Mm. Um, and I said, well, I'm having a self-harming party right now. Come on in, dinner party. Come on in. <laughs> and they said, oh, oh, we got the wrong information. Goodbye. Yeah. But that was, of course, if they can use the mental health card, then you'll never That's get right. your guns back. Yeah. Well, well, so, well, they can lock you up. Yeah. So for, someone for rang several in days. Or, yeah. Yeah. I say someone rang in. But considering how many trans police there are now, and mm. we've discovered, um, who knows? Because I would say that the the trans side of it were probably just, I mean, you can do what you want. Your police are just a big gang, or you can make up a lot of shit, really. It's, there's no way that they can't. They well, could have shot me, and if no one was here, no one would know what happened. I don't know if you've done it, but I, I did it, and I do it quite regularly now, is I use the Privacy Act, and I ask for everything that's in my file with the police, including the QID numbers of people who have accessed my file. Okay. And I think, you, I think you'll find it'll be very astonishing, Rachel. I because, need to do that. I haven't. Because when I did it a couple of years ago, I found that there were 742 police had accessed my file. Wow. No, that, that's, that, that, that's just busybody nosy. See me in the news. Oh, let's go and look them up on our system. That's what wow. that is. That's incredible. It's just like the nurses accessing the, you know, the who the guy was that had the eels that they had to pull out of his rectum. Remember that? Rectum, it damn near killed him. <laughs> <laughs> he was very ill. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, Rachel, I better let you go. <laughs> Okay, well, it's really good to talk to you, and um, it would be good if you were coming down to Wellington on Saturday, but I guess you're not. No, I've got a, I've actually got a gun auction to go to. Oh, that's more important. Oh, Dead yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, fully automatic weapons, belt-fed weapons, that's the way to go. <laughs> God, don't get me started. All right, well, nice talking to you. Okay, Rachel, thank you very much. Cool. Wasn't it interesting that Rachel said we're at the point where blokes – Proper blokes, not those effeminate whoopsy soy latte drinking types, need to stand up and say something about protecting women and women's spaces from men who would like us to believe their delusions. She's right. We do. Tell me your thoughts on what Rachel Stewart had to say by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thank you for tuning in to RCR Reality Check Radio. If you like what you're listening to, just like what you're listening to. Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We would love to hear from you. So connect with us today.